Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Photo Finds. My name is Nick Russo. I'm your host. Thanks so much for stopping by this week, guys. This edition is for October 14th, 2014. Let's go ahead and be- begin. Now, if you're familiar with the central Florida area, you'll know that on I Drive, there used to be a place called the Festival Bay Mall. And if you are familiar with it, you'll know that It didn't do so well for a number of reasons, financially and functionality was kind of poor. Um, They admitted to that and they closed down. And now what's going to be taking its place is something that's called the Artigan Marketplace. Now we were lucky enough to join the media preview this past week and check out what is to come. Now you may remember we did a segment about the uh, Artigan Marketplace a while back on this channel, but here we're going to get some more details and check in on the construction of the the project. Now we headed into the preview center and this is kind of where the leasing office is where all the clients go to check out what's going on with the project and they had some sample uh sample boutique set up here in the preview center. Now these are actual boutiques that will be in the Artigan marketplace. This is Polka's hottest. These are kind of hot sauces and condiments all based off local Orlando bands. And you can see here that the boutiques are all kind of set up in these cage-like steel structures with flags on the top and they can kind of extend out into the foreground of the boutiques as well. Over on the sides all around the preview center they have some blueprints and drafting set up for the different elements elements around them all, signs and things like that. And this shot here can show you how some of the boutiques can be converted into galleries where artists can sell their work. So it's not only merchandise being sold, I guess art is merchandise, but they can also be more open galleries like this where they don't uh, kind of fill the entire space. Each boutique will have the sign in the front and then also these flags kind of hanging down to indicate exactly what the boutique is. This is uh, another gallery on the opposite side that's just showing more of the um, table structures that they have in the middle. So they offer a lot of different kinds of, um, you know, presentation options for the leasers or the the uh, tenants. This is a Florida soap company, and this is kind of an example of how these boutiques, these steel cages, can be kind of transformed into a full-functioning store. Florida Soap Company is owned by a woman named Misty, and she really expressed happiness about the affordability and foot traffic that Artigan Marketplace is going to uh, provide for these business owners. And she also was really happy that it's an easy way to get into the retail market without too much of a risk. Here's some samples of her work there. And uh, she was giving all of the people who had attended the media preview a sample of her soap and I still have it and I like it so that's a boutique you might want to look up out for when the uh, Artigan marketplace opens another shot at the Polka's hottest hot sauces those uh, band inspired sauces and you can just real get an idea that these are not makeshift boutiques these are pretty permanent the leases are from six months to a year so these business owners kind of are going to be making home for a while in these these booths now we're heading out into the actual mall now where all of this is undergoing construction and if you see out in the distance there we will obviously get some more oh, up close shots these this is where the boutiques are going to go. Now, this white wall here that you see, this is actually the entrance to phase two. What's going to be opening on November 20th is just phase one, um, but the mall is going to open in three different phases. And here's a shot down the entranceway. This is going to be phase two. So you're not going to be seeing this until, I believe they said, either spring or summer of next year. Now, these rafters are not new, but the uh, tour guide's were pointing out that although these beams and some of these design elements had been here since the beginning of Festival Bay Mall, a lot of people who visited the mall never even saw these things because there was not enough sunlight being let in and there was not enough light in there and it wasn't open enough. So one thing that they're trying to do in addition to the new boutiques is open up the space and give it a completely different feel because one of the things that was kind of problematic for Festival Bay was the fact that their design elements were rather strange and a lot of the times some people said they were creepy and we'll see some of those in a bit that still remain. Here's a look at those actual boutiques. In all, there's going to be 165 boutiques from opening day. 
Here's a look at some of the uh, space that can be rented out, the larger outlet space. This is Western uh, Shepler's Western Wear. This is an existing store. It's closed down for the time being as these refurbishments and renovations undergo. But Shepler's is going to be cut in half, and the second half of it is going to be made into Gods and Monsters comic book store, which is going to be the second largest comic book store in America and the third largest in the world. So Shepler's is going to be reduced in size, but... In return, we're going to get that comic book store, which is going to be complete with a wedding gazebo and a noodle bar where you can kind of play some video games and read comic books and just relax. It seems like a really interesting idea. Another shot of those boutiques and the cages. And now we're entering the Great Hall. So this is going to be kind of the main entrance way. And this area that I'm shooting right here over to the left of those boutiques is just going to be a seating area, a little dining area, a casual dining area where you can get food from the food trucks outside and the, and the food locations that will be stationed inside the Great Hall. And you can enjoy them in here. One of the most obvious and eye-catching elements of the Great Hall is the suspended playground up here, the green and yellow, green and orange, I'm sorry, playground in the background for kids. It's kind of a rope obstacle course, and we'll see it in all of its glory when it's done. It's kind of in its early stages here. This is the Great Hall entrance. It lets in a lot of light. And in this room, this giant room, previously there was a kind of entrance way water feature and it took them about 40 trucks of cement to fill in that greeting uh, reflecting pool I'll call it and that is gone and I asked are you gonna kind of have any water features in the entire mall and their response to that was no we are trying to stay away from any elements any representation of Festival Bay whatsoever I guess it really puts a bad taste in their mouth that that project didn't go so well down this hallway here, these shots show Outdoor World is in the background. So some of the properties, some of the stores are going to remain, like the larger Outdoor World and Fuddruckers. But for the most part, everything is changing. Now we're heading outside around this uh, wet cement here, or this wet pavement, and we're heading over to check out Toby Keith's I Love This Bar and Grill. It's one of the um, more high-profile bars and restaurants that are going to be coming to the Artigan Marketplace. This is a patio that they have set up out here. It's going to hold about 36 tables. I think they said 32 to 36 tables. All right, heading into the side entrance here, and one of the first things that we see is a bar in the shape of a guitar. This guitar-shaped bar is 187 feet around, and it will seat 100 people when it's complete. Over to the left of that bar is kind of a seating area here with a lot of booths, and there'll be more additional seating in the center. Another look over here at the bar, and in the background is a stage that is going to be complete with its own in-house engineer, state-of-the-art lighting and audio equipment, and kind of modern country bands, both local and national, will perform here. Here's another shot of that guitar bar in all of its glory it will be painted as Toby Keith's signature red white and blue guitar if you know what that looks like here's a look over to the left of the stage at the VIP room that will be available for special events and out here we're heading in to the Great Hall area again but before we go back inside just looking at this lane here this is the drop-off loop so one of the lanes will be utilized for dropping off guests to the main entrance and then one of them will be utilized for uh, taxis and valet and things like that and over in the background if you see that slab of concrete behind the caution tape that is where the food trucks are going to be so there are going to be food trucks out here from Mall open to mall close every single day of the year, which is pretty exciting. This is a look at one of the archways. This structure is not new, but they did paint these red. So these did exist when it was Festival Bay. But what I did want to point out here was kind of the old design elements. This is the elements that uh, Festival Bay used to have. So you can see kind of the muted color tones, and you can almost see why it didn't really work. The checkerboard floor... It's turning into more of a uh, dull but artistic looking palette, and I think it's just going to work for the space. 
A few more shots of the boutiques themselves. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that there is a lot of sunlight in the main hallways, but it does not reach the boutiques themselves. All of the lighting will be coming from those fluorescent lights hanging above. Now this area, this is heading into where the movie theater is, over to the left of the movie theater. This is where the the previous Universal Information area was, which will be turning into an art gallery. What will be featured in the art gallery is unseen right now. They know, but they're just not announcing it. Up close look at that, where the uh, art gallery will be. Here's a more close up look at the boutiques themselves. These are empty, of course. This one is a larger boutique, and this one is a smaller one. This is rather small, about less than 10 feet wide and long, and this is what it looks like locked up. So, all of the owners will lock up their boutiques at night for safety, obviously. And these are the gift bags they handed out to the um, each member of the press. Now, I asked if these will be the bags that every single vendor were, will hand out, and the answer was that each vendor will have their own bags that they will hand their merchandise out in. So these aren't the ones that you'll be seeing on a regular basis. So just for the event. As we head out, just getting a look up at the banner... Grand opening, like I said, November 20th of this year. And the last thing on the way out that I wanted to point out was that the Van Skate Park has not started construction to its new title. Um, it is going to remain a skate park, but with new ownership, and that process has not started just quite yet. All right, everyone, that is going to do it for this installment of Photo Finds for October 14th, 2014. I'm your host, Nick Russo, and until next week... Have fun, guys. Bye.